And now, Thriller Thursdays on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. Chapter 11 I heard her before I saw her, which seemed to be her way. It wasn't a good way, and it got people killed, but I wasn't here to offer free advice. I had come in here to try and get the stink of robbery homicide off my clothes, or at least stop noticing it quite so much. The stomp of the high-heeled boots was distinctive, and they told me Blondie was still 20 feet away. I raised my glass to signal the bartender that I could use another beer. He nodded, but he wasn't exactly looking at me when he did so. I swiveled my bar stool 180 degrees and rested my elbows on the bar behind me. Trixie Dixon, girl detective, glared daggers at me. She did that a lot. You bastard, she said, pointing an index finger at me. That didn't seem to be a question, and I wasn't prepared to argue the point, so I didn't say anything. The bartender put my beer down on the bar beside my right arm with a small thump so I would know it was there. Thanks, Jimmy, I said. I can't believe you would sell out your client like that, she hissed at me. Now I was confused and did my best to show it. You wouldn't be taking the air just now if you hadn't done the same thing, princess. And my client may have broken a few of the harder-to-keep commandments, but at least he isn't a blackmailer. A what? She seemed genuinely thrown by this. Or a good liar, which was my bet. You heard me, I said. Not much point trying to shield my client. When the cops heard your story, they would have known who you were taking pictures of and why. What made you think I would talk first, she bristled, drawing herself up to her full height as if that was going to do any good if it came down to it. I didn't know, and I didn't give a damn, I said. I knew you'd talk sooner or later. This is a murder investigation now, and Sabian takes those pretty seriously. My client might be a louse, but I got the feeling he legitimately had feelings for the girl, beyond the obvious ones. I decided that he wouldn't want me to get in the way of the search for whoever killed her. That's a pretty convenient way of looking at things, she said, still lecturing me like my older sister used to. I never liked it then, and I don't like it now. Thanks, I said, picking up my beer. I thought so. You don't even know that your client didn't kill Janet Timms, she snapped. You were too busy trying to kill me to pay attention. If I had been trying to kill you, I said simply, you'd be dead. And how in the hell do you know who my client is? Sabian told me, she said. I don't think he meant to. He was in one of his full-throated monologues, and it just kind of popped out. He was comparing you to a retarded chimpanzee, by the way. Both of us, to retarded chimpanzees, I said. He used the same line with me. I was so traumatized, I decided to have a beer. Yeah, you were real tough to locate, by the way, she said, her hands on her hips. Your car is back at the office, and you strike me as too stubborn to take the bus. This is the first bar on a direct route between points A and B that isn't full of off-duty cops. All true, I said. And the fact that I know the bartender by name tells you that this has happened to me once or twice before. But I was easy to find because I wasn't trying not to be. And you didn't find me because you were looking for me. You found me because your car is also back at my office. You are also too stubborn to take the bus. And you also felt a powerful need to wet your whistle. There was a small pause. So, she said. So bring the lady a beer, Jimmy. I said, knowing he had not moved too far away to listen. Make it a rye and water, she said. You're just a professional contrarian, aren't you? I said. It sounded like a question, but it wasn't really. And don't be confused by the fact that I'm having a drink, she said, stepping up to the bar beside me and taking a seat. I still hate you. I wouldn't have it any other way, I said. It's been working so well thus far. We were quiet for a minute, and Jimmy brought her drink and set it down. Your lawyer works fast, she said at last. I nodded. Sid Edelman, I said. The best cheap lawyer money can buy. He doesn't waste a lot of time because at any given moment he's billing six different clients. The man's day is 136 hours long. She snorted a little and said nothing. Sid didn't do anything real clever this time, though, I said. How come yours kept you so long? I sent her on an errand first, she said. I nodded. Sending your lawyer to talk to your client was an expensive way to handle these things, but sometimes there wasn't any other way. But that wasn't the part of the sentence that stood out. Her? I asked. Yep, she answered. You travel in packs, don't you? We go to the ladies' room in groups, too, she said without smiling. Silence. What's her name, I said for no reason. Molly Cameron, she said. She any good, I asked. I have a feeling you're about to find out, she said. What does that mean? Skip it, she said with a small shudder. Silence. So if you were working for Mayfield, she said at last, what the hell were you doing at his mistress's place? 
Looking for you, idiot, I said. Going back for more that soon, that was sloppy. Although I got to admit, I didn't really expect it. Wait, she said, what? Maybe your client didn't tell you, I said, but she sent Roger Mayfield one of your snapshots last week. Real eye-opener, too. You've got a career as a pornographer if the girl detective thing doesn't work out. She shook her head three times, as if shaking off multiple urges to punch me in the teeth and stay on the subject at hand. Wait, she said again. What? Wow, I said. I like your interrogation style. Did they teach you that at reform school? Her ears went red and there was briefly murder in her eyes, but she shook it off again. Roger Mayfield was being blackmailed, she said. Don't pretend you don't know, I said. What else could those photos have been for? Okay, she said. First of all, I have been on this job since yesterday morning. So if somebody's caught your client gathering rosebuds while he may, it wasn't me. That sounded like online, but I said nothing. Secondly, I'm not working for the blackmailer, idiot, she said in disgust. I take dirty pictures for the same reason you do. And now it made sense. Divorce work? She nodded and shrugged at the same time, as if to suggest I was a jackass for having to ask, which suddenly seemed true. You're working for Anne Mayfield? I asked. Was, she said. She doesn't see a real future in the affair, what with her husband's girlfriend being extra dead and all. And she figures when the papers get through with this, she'll have everything she needs to put him in the poorhouse and keep him there. Oh good, I said. This case needed a revenge angle too. It was getting stale with all the sex and murder. That's what Molly said, she said with a nod. She figures this will be all over the papers and it will be a good idea to stay out of them if possible. Yeah, I said, rubbing my stubbled chin with my index finger absentmindedly. Yeah. What is it, she asked. What is what, I replied. There's an idea rattling around in that empty head of yours, she said. The papers, I said. Sabian was on about the papers. He got Sid on the same idea. Come clean now and we'll keep you out of the papers. Yeah, so, she asked. We didn't exactly come off looking like Nobel contenders in that story. And I want my camera back, by the way, or I'll kill you. You need to stop with the killing me stuff, I said. I'm trying to think. I thought I heard gears grinding, she snorted. If Sabian had a chance to humiliate me in the papers, I said, he'd do it. He wouldn't hesitate. He certainly wouldn't use it for bait to get me to give information he thinks is his God-given right. She looked at me sideways and nodded slowly. She had clearly danced with Sabian before. So when he catches us in a particularly stupid story like this, I said, how come it's the first club out of his bag? Why does it even occur to him? Because he knows the story isn't going to be anywhere near the papers, Trixie said, picking up the thread. And he's already had a call from someone to make damn sure of that, I said. Someone who is also handling the papers directly, I'll bet, she said. I shook my head. Roger Mayfield can't buy that kind of clout on a city planner's salary. What's a city planner, she asked. I shrugged. I guess he plans cities. So you don't know, she said with a contemptuous curl of her lip. Neither do you, I pointed out. Shut up, she said, going back to her drink. What does any of this get us? It means, I said, that we're sitting in the middle of something bigger than we thought, and I like to stay ahead of the curve. What curve, she asked. I'm off the case. We're private detectives, I said. We're off the case when we say we're off the case, which is never just when it starts to get interesting. Besides, I'm on a three-day retainer that hasn't quite run out yet. Bully for you, she said. You could sit in if you like, I said for reasons passing understanding. Why, she asked. It was a damn good question. We only started making sense of this when we stopped shooting and started talking, I said. That was true. She thought about it for a minute. I want to be clear, she said. I am only agreeing to this because I think it is in the best interest of my business to close out this ribald little tale of adventure looking like something other than a bumbling idiot. Granted, I said. And because you were the first detective I have talked to for five minutes that didn't try to pick me up, she said. This is also true, I said. It helps that I don't like you very much. She nodded and we both took a drink. You do like girls, don't you? She asked. I nodded. I like girls, I said. I just can't stand you. Perfect, she said, setting her empty glass down with a thump. Where do we start? Thank you for listening to Thursday Thrillers right here on the Mutual Audio Network. Please consider subscribing to other days of the Mutual Feeds, including Monday Matinee for classic live and theatrical audio plays, Tuesday Terrors for horror audio drama, Wednesday Wonders, our science fiction and fantasy magazine, Friday Follies, our end-of-the-week comedy series, Saturday Story Circle for kids and families alike, and Sunday Showcase. 
bringing you the very newest in audio releases from our United Artists of Audio right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The Mutual Audio Network. Listening and imagining together.